You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of When Stars Fall. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Alright. Thank you. I believe that you can make a difference because you are someone like... Because you are someone like you. I believe that you and I could be great friends as well. As well, should that be something that interests you. It's here. I think being friends with you could be something very wonderful. Silas grinned and I saw his tail shift ever so slightly. I'm glad to hear it. Well, Marcus, I would be honored to call you my friend. I returned a smile. Same to you, Silas. Silas and I finished cleaning the dishes in the kitchen just before Mr. Jertle returned. I'm a bit drained after the long day. I'm going to wash up and head to bed. Have a good night, Mr. Jerda. Marcus. Good night, Master Teagland. Night, Silas. Silas disappeared up the stairs, and I could make out the faint sound of his door opening and then closing. Oh, the kitchen looks spick and span. The two of you did a fine job of it. I'm happy I could help, Mr. Jerda. I think I'm going to head up to the bed as well. I'm a bit tired myself. Sounds like a plan. I won't be up much longer myself. Just got to take care of a few last things. Have a good rest, Marcus. I headed up the stairs to my room and closed the door behind me. Exhaustion hit me quickly, and I barely had enough time to undress before collapsing onto the bed and finding some and finding some much-needed sleep. <sighs> Too late. No changing fate. No, I can fix this. You... You doomed us all. Just need to find... This belongs to me now. You don't... I won't let... I'll end everything. You must forget Marcus. I sat up, gasping for air, cold sweat clinging to my body. Where? It took me several moments to remember that I was in Silas's home, in the room he had provided me. I dream again. Everything is still fuzzy, but I remember all of it this time. The sun was still up outside, and I didn't know how long I had been out for. I wonder, should I tell Silas about the dreams? I mean to at dinner, but I had forgotten. Tell Silas. I need to tell Silas. He may know something about it. I got out of my bed quickly and threw on the pants and shirt I had been wearing at dinner before leaving the room and heading to Silas's. I give a few short knocks on Silas's door. Uh, just a moment. I really hope I didn't wake him up. I just really need to talk to him about this before I forget. About a minute later, the door opened and Silas welcomed me inside before closing the door behind me. Oh, Jesus. Woof! Damn, son, you'd be... Jesus. He already looked great, man. The shirt really hit all the details of his body. Holy hell. What can I do for you, Marcus? I'm sorry if I woke you up. I just need to talk to you about something. Not at all. I had actually just finished drawing my fur after my bath. Silas walked over to his bed and sat on the edge. He patted the mattress next to him and waited for me to sit. What's on your mind, my friend? I remember something. Or at least I think I did. It's all just still bits and pieces and fuzzy. It was like watching through a foggy window. Calm down, Marcus. Breathe and then tell me what you remember. I took a deep breath and made myself slow down. I was talking with someone or maybe multiple someones. <sighs> One second, y'all. Water time. Okay. I remember seeing a red sky as if it were on fire and burning. The person or people told me that I couldn't change fate and that I just doomed them all. I remember I said I could fix it, but I needed to find something. Then there was a flash and I was somewhere else, talking with someone else. They said they, they said something belonged to them. And there was something else there too, something big. I think it was an arch or uh, uh, an arch of some sort or something. Everything was going by in flames and it all seemed out of order and hectic. Silas simply sat there and waited for me to finish before he placed a hand on his chin and sat quietly for another moment. Honestly, I can't think of anything that may line up with what you recall. Perhaps it's your mind's way of piecing together, piecing memories back together and trying to fill in the gaps. We can always do more research on the at the Academy and see if there were any major fires recently. Silas turned to me and placed a hand on my shoulder. Whatever the case may be, I doubt that you're I doubt you're someone who would doom anyone. For now, I think it's best you let your mind sort itself out and get some rest. If anything else happens, my door will always be open for you should you want to talk more. Thank you, Silas. I think I really need to talk to talk through it to try to make sense of it before I forget again. We both got up and Silas walked me to the door. 
We said our goodnights once again, and I headed back to my room. Even though my mind was still racing with thoughts and questions, when my head hit the pillow, sleep found me quickly. A knock on the door startled me from my sleep. Marcus, are you awake? What? Where? I think I made some sort of noise that may have been a response, but it probably sounded more like a groan. I'll take that as a maybe. May I come in? I glanced out the window, but only but I saw only darkness. <sighs> what time is it? I forced myself to get up and put on some pants before walking over to the door and opening it for Silas. Ah, wonderful, you are awake. What time is it? Well, well, here, it's a bit past midnight. On the other side, it's nearly eight in the morning. Oh, right. Tent. Magic doorway. Other side of the world. It was all starting to come back to me. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll be ready in just a moment. No need to rush too much. It seems a storm indeed rolled in overnight on the other side, so travel will be slow regardless of when we set back on the path. Mr. Jurda has already prepared a light meal for us and is currently seeing to the, ho to the horse and carriage to make sure everything is good to go. We will likely set off within the hour, so there's time for you to wash up again if you like. Silas's eyes roamed over my body, over my bare chest, and I heard him sniff slightly. Crap, I don't smell after sweating last night because of the dream. Although, by the look and smell of it, you're quite fresh and smell delightfully of chamomile. Thank you, the bath was very relaxing and needed. Though, if I still look and smell alright, then I guess I'll just skip a second bath for now. Fair enough. I'll meet you downstairs if you'd like to take the time to finish dressing. Silas turned and walked away. I closed the door and started looking through the wardrobe for something to wear. Sally said there was a storm. Since it's fall, I should probably choose something with a bit of thickness, since it will probably be chilly. Unless it has, yeah, unless he has some sort of heat magic? Is that a thing? It wouldn't surprise me at this point. I grabbed another simple outfit that was a bit heavier than the one I had last night, and I grabbed an extra jacket just in case. I quickly got changed and headed downstairs. Once downstairs, I saw Silas putting together a plate of what looked to be eggs and toast. Yeah, eggs and toast. It smells delicious! Indeed, Mr. Jurda did a wonderful job. Your plate is already prepared over here. I wandered over to the counter where there was indeed already a plate, ma already a plate made with two slices of toast and an egg sunny side up. I walked over to the table and sat down next to Silas. Uh, Mr. Jurda already eat? Yes, he's seeing to our ride now to ensure we are sure we are ready to set off. I used a fork to place my egg between two slices of toast and a bit and bit into it. Warm yolk oozed out of the side slightly, but what didn't st but what didn't stay in the sand in the sandwich I scooped up with the toast and continued eating. That's an interesting way to eat. Silas chuckled. He broke the yolk and broke the oak the yolk of his egg slightly with a fork and dipped his toast in it. Oh, yeah, I guess it was it is a little weird. Weird, yes, but seemingly efficient as well. We continued to eat our meals in peace, just talking about what was planned for the day and how much longer we may take we may take to reach the academy. And Silas told me that due to the storm, the road had become muddy, but not too but not too dangerous that we would only be delayed a few hours. We should arrive sometime in the early evening if all goes smoothly. Oh, good. Not that I'd complain about spending more time getting to hang out with you. Worry not, there will be plenty of time for us to hang out at the academy should you choose to as well. So, on to another note. Did you have any more dreams or memories come to you after your chat last night? I hadn't even thought about it that much, but I slept pretty soundly. No, I know, unfortunately. Once I had fallen asleep again, I don't think I dreamed at all. I'm sure your memories will return in time if you continue to let them. It's like, y'all, it is water time. Jesus, that's such a good picture. Alrighty. Anyway, we should clean up and get a move on. Silas stood and brought our dishes over to the sink. I joined him and, yeah, and helped him clean, the, clean and dry the dishes. After helping with the dishes, I went, down, I went upstairs to quickly brush my teeth and hair before meeting Silas outside on the other side. It seemed like the worst of the storm had already passed, but the sky was still dark and overcast and there was still a small shower falling. The air smelled of fresh rainfall and the ground squished beneath my boots as I walked toward Silas and Mr. Jurder, who seemed to be waiting on me. And with Marcus accounted for, I believe that's everything. Is everyone ready to head out? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Silas walked over and placed his hand on the side of the tent. Away. The tent collapsed and folded in on itself again and again, growing smaller until it sat folded in a cube shape with small metal plates beneath it. <laughs> the plates rose and covered the tent cube, and sitting there where the tent used to be was now the metallic cube from before. Silas gathered up the cube and walked over to the back of that carriage to place it back in the trunk. Mr. Jurda hopped onto the front of the carriage, and I noticed the horse had already been, bri been bridled and prepared for our journey. Silas opened the carriage door and waited. Well, are you coming? Well, that was all very efficient. Uh, yeah. 
I hurried over to the door, and Silas ushered me in and waited for me to be seated before he followed suit and closed the door. A short whistle from Silas was the only signal Mr. Jordan needed, needed, and needed, and the carriage lurched forward and began moving out the woods and toward the road. Our travel was indeed slower than it had been the day before. While the rain wasn't too bad currently, the road was still slick and muddy, with for which forced the pace of the horse and carriage to slow. Despite the long, the long ride, Silas and I didn't discuss too much. A few hours into the ride, we broke into the drinks and snacks, and I had and I had asked Mr. Jordan to stop the carriage just long enough to bring him some of the refreshments. A few more hours passed, and Silas had leaned against the wall and fallen asleep. I had half expected him to curl up like a fox would, but I guess beast men were more man than, more man than animal. I still didn't know how, I still didn't know much about the world around me, but the things I had learned from Silas were helpful, and I tried to commit as much to memory as I could. When Silas had woken up from his nap an hour later, I asked if I was to asked if he would teach me more magic while he, while we waited. Sorry, but we probably shouldn't push too much until you have found some found some found more some more formal training and practice. Keep practicing your meditation and visualization. I'm sure if you decide to join the Mage Course, you'll have plenty of opportunities to learn magic. Even some of the other courses dabble in the mystical arts in different ways. It's disappointing. I really wanted Silas to teach me, but he does have a point. Formal training at the Academy would be best. Well, assuming I can even enroll. Do I even want to? My main goal has been to gather information and try to recover my memories, but the more Silas talked about the Academy, the more interested I had become in it. Silas, you keep, talking, you keep talking like I'm going to be attending the classes with you, but... You also said it's a prestigious place and difficult to get into. What makes you think I'll be accepted? Well, I suppose I'm hoping you'll attend and be accepted. Your body remembers things you don't, which has become quite clear since I met you. I've already seen what you're capable of with, with a small amount of magic I taught you. I hope that perhaps if you were to attempt the applied enrollment test, you may surprise them yourself and them and be accepted. Honestly, I don't know if you, I don't know if you even want to attend, but I hope you do. I've grown quite fond of being able to hang out with you. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out what secrets my body might be keeping. Silas smiled at that. I look forward to seeing just what you can do. Silas glanced out the window and then back to me. I recognize the scenery, and should be much longer until we reach our destination. It's slightly ahead of our delayed schedule, but we should be arriving within the next hour or two, just before supper time. The sky was still overcast and dark, making it seem like it, like it was already well into the evening. It made me wonder if we'd even be able to make out the make out the academy building once we reached it, unless there were some sort of light sources. Over the course of the next couple of hours, Silas and I had gone on, ab gone on about the different factions in the country and, we had, and what we had hoped to do by learning, learning at the academy. I had learned that aside from humans and beastmen, there were many other types of people living all over the world. The elves, the dwarves, the half-dragons, the merfolk, the fae, and so many more. One second, y'all. It is water time. Uh, let me... Next line. There we go. Each group having their own alliances and dealing with each other, many seemingly living in a strained place, strained place, according to Silas. It seemed like there, were way too much, there was way too much going on in the world to have just forgotten about. It made my head spin just trying to take it all in and think about it. Then I felt the carriage bounce and I could hear the clatter of hooves on stone. Silas pulled the window curtain aside and gestured toward the now open view. Welcome to the Academy. Oh, nice. Beautiful. My jaw dropped at the view. I'd expected one, maybe two large buildings, but it was so much larger than I could imagine. It's like a city! Silas laughed. <laughs> Indeed, the Academy is officially its own city in the Kingdom of Ruthos. Is that a castle? Yes, that is the main structure for the Academy dorms in many of the classes. The rest of the city is where many citizens live and hold market. There's also a variety of nice shops and activities to do during summer break, semester breaks. Outside of the Kingdom itself, this is likely the largest city you'll see this side of the continent. The carriage continued beyond the main gates of the city, and we continued along a paved road that l we continued along the paved road and headed straight for the castle. It was about another half hour from the main gate to the entrance of the castle itself by carriage. I marveled at just how large the city really was. Though soon enough we were pulling into a large stable building and getting out of the carriage. Salus advised me Mr. Jordan Salus advised Mr. Jordan that he should see to it that the horse and carriage were taken care of and luggage taken to the proper area. Then Silas took me and we headed into the main entrance of the castle. The inside was massive, not only the entrance, but as we walked in, the numbers of the, uh, the numbers of arches and doors leading to other areas just as large added to the sheer scale of this castle. This place is huge! My words echoed off the walls, and several people turned to look in our direction. Oops, inside voice, Marcus. Silas laughed. Indeed. <clears throat> Indeed. It's quite a marvel. Every time I come here, it seems as though we're always there's always more to see. I'd recommend sticking close by someone who knows their way around while you're here, or you're likely to get lost. I have no doubt about that. Good thing I've got an excellent guide. Well, now I have to live up to that illustrious title. 
Shall I give you a quick tour of the main hall before we go to the administration office? Yes. Please do. Very well. The Academy was founded two centuries ago during the Dragon War. It was founded in an effort to train new fighters for, for the Kingdom's armies. However, before the first recruits were ever completed their training, the war ended. Rather than disband the Academy, the King of that era, King Eldridge... King Eldridge Jimmel... Jimmel 92 decreed that the Academy would be used to train volunteers to aid the citizens in the Kingdom with protection and other tasks as needed. Those volunteers, once graduated, would be given the title Adventurer and would be granted permissions to travel and perform duties under the King's blessing. However, nowadays, the term Adventurer is used pretty, by pretty much anyone who deems themselves tough enough to, get a, to, go out and earn, to go out and fight and earn coin. As we talk, as we walked, Silas stopped in front of a large portrait that had to be at least 20, le at least 20 feet tall and 10 feet wide. The portrait was that of an older human. He was wearing colorful clothing made of, po made of, possibly, made of possibly silk and various furs. His face looked worn, yet still chiseled and strong, and gave an impression I can only describe as powerful but kind. His golden hair, just beginning to gray on the sides, was adorned with a magnificent crown of silver and sapphire. I assume this is King Jimmelnine. Correct. An impressive looking man, no? Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye